Okay, so he loaded us up. We've got our hay bales that are a little bit bigger than, than they were last year. So we had a harder time getting the straps on here, but they're on there, just barely. Had enough room to get them on there. So I got two bundles, 42 bales, and they are bigger than last year. So we're gonna head and get these home. Just a quick video showing you what we're doing today. This is all for the garden. There you go, got the whole trailer unloaded. Got all these stacked up over here, right next to the garden. And so those are gonna go a long way of uh, covering the garden after I get the cardboard on top of it. You know, one thing I'll give you, when uh, last year, I, you know, I, I've talked about it numerous times on my channel where I've had lots of hard, I've had a hard time growing onions. Uh, last number of years, I've tried over and over again to grow onions and grow them successfully. And this year, last year, I tried something different, and that was just put them in the ground and then cover them with straw. I've never done that before. And this year, or this last year, we had onions. I mean, some good sized bulbs, onions. And so we're gonna try that again this year. Uh, I've tried different methods of doing onions, you know, watering them less, watering them more, you know, putting them in the ground at different depths over the years, tried different people's suggestions. And so far the only way that it's worked is put them in the ground just like normal, just stick them in the ground and cover them with straw. And that did the best. I mean, without, and I didn't even cover them with cardboard. I just, I just put them in the ground, just right the dirt and then covered them with straw and boom, um, just did great. So I'm gonna try that again this year. Hopefully we'll have onions. I'm gonna plant a lot more this year. Uh, but uh, that's going to be my, my ticket for now. We'll see if it works this year, two years in a row. See if it was just a fluke, you never know. Every year gardening is different. Every year things are going to succeed, things are going to fail. And so that's why you grow an abundance of varieties. That way when things fail you have other things that succeed and then you have you know, produce from your garden. Um, and then always, again, plant more than plant more than what you think you're going to need because if you lose about 25 or 50 percent of your crop there's always that other 20 or 75 or 50 percent of your crop that's going to feed you and your family so always plant more than you when you think you're going to need so i got the straw down we'll use most of that for the garden and then also we got lambs that are about to drop here pretty soon and so that'll be bedding for the new baby lambs we'll usually keep them in a cage with mama for about three days uh, so that they can you know get get into the habit of, of feeding. The lambs can get in the ha habit of feeding from their mama. And after about three days, we let them out. But we want some dry bedding because right now it's the winter rains. You get lots of rains, it's lots of mud. I don't want the new baby lambs in the mud. And some of that, sometimes that mud can get pretty deep and you don't want that to be a hazard to your new lambs. So we put a bedding area down, put a cage around it and you know, hopefully the lambs will do good. So this year we should be doubling our herd of our lambs, our sheep. Uh, I've got four mamas over there, they're all pregnant. Two of them, the older ones will probably drop twins. They look really big. And then the two younger mamas would probably drop singles. And so we've got four lambs and a, and a ram right now, or four ewes and a ram right now. We should have about six, maybe ram, uh, lambs that drop. That will almost, you know, more than double the herd. So hopefully that will go good. I'll keep you guys updated on that. All right guys, we'll leave it at that. Oh, one thing I wanna show you real quick. Let me take you over here. So over here is where we've been growing some mushrooms. I think I'm gonna make this my mushroom garden. I'm gonna clean it out a little bit better. You can see that there is some low branches here, a bunch of brambles and stuff right here. I'm gonna clear all this out. This gets a lot of great shade in the summertime because of the cedars that are in here. And so I've got some shiitake logs here and some of them actually, because we've had so much rain lately, you can see, let me see if I can show you this. You can see there's actually sh some shiitakes that are coming up right there. There's a shiitake. There's a shiitake. Right there. Shiitake right there. And so some of these logs are coming up in the middle of winter. That's never happened before. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this whole area, I think, into a mushroom bed. Growing oysters, uh, wine caps, shiitakes, and maybe even some... 
uh, reishi mushrooms. I have some mycelium for reishi, so I'm going to try that. But all this area gets just a really good amount of shade uh, during the summer, and it stays pretty moist. So I think I'm going to clear this whole area out. You can see there's vines and stuff here. i got to cut all this out. Uh, cut out cut out some of these lower branches and stack some logs and even maybe halfway bury some logs for the reishi into the ground um, But I think this is going to be a good area to grow Some some mushrooms this year. So I'm gonna clear that out. That'll be another video, but yeah, I've got I've got some shiitakes coming up right now Look at that I may have to pick that here soon and eat it it's only a couple of them, but, you know, a couple's better than none. I don't see any other ones growing here. There's a little one growing down there. And one growing right there. This is an old one I picked earlier. There's one there. Yeah, so we'll keep you updated and posted on that. But uh, other than that, guys, we will see you next time on the homestead. Bye.